Hey guys, how's it going? This is Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm actually going to go through loops in Unity in C Sharp. We're going to be doing four loops. We're going to be doing while loops, also a for each, and we'll do a do while as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you start just like we did on the previous lessons, right clicking on the hierarchy, creating an empty game object and renaming the game object to video three because this is going to be the third video of the lessons and right after you create the game object i'm going to have you go into the inspector and then we're going to be creating a new script and we're going to call it video three so let's do that and let's go back into assets just to make sure that we move that script into the scripts excellent okay so the next thing that i want you to do is basically double click on video three and we're gonna start where we landed on the previous lessons, which, you know, we have video one and video two with the different, with the variables and methods that we declare. And on the second one, we also did some logical expressions and we talk about operators. So now number three, let's focus on, on doing loops. So I'm just gonna do loops on the on the comments. So, so why would you use loops in C Sharp? That's a, that's a question that, you know, I, I get a lot from people that are trying to understand C sharp. So honestly, you do loops to do things that need to happen in a sequence. So I in games, I might need a loop to basically insert items into the inventory. Let's say that I need to add, you know, maybe 10 items or I need to go loop through a list of items. And let's say that those items need to be decremented because I use some of them and so you can use list for a lot of things where you have to go through a sequence so what i'm going to show you how to do is the first one is and it's one of the most common ones that you'll start to look for is actually the for loop so the for loop has a syntax that is that is really interesting at first it might be a little bit you know what i would call a scary per se and but after you do it a couple of times and you get you know into the habits of creating loops you're gonna it's gonna start to make a lot of sense so the first thing that you do is you actually tell it the type that you want to that you want to start with so i'm going to start with an integer because i want to basically loop through through a list so if i want to say okay i want to start the the variable that i'm going to be using is i and it's going to have the type of an integer i want to start the integer as zero so this is basically the starting point you need to declare at what point in the loop you want to start. So you, we can either start at a higher number or what I call a high bound versus a low bound, or you can start just from the, you know, going from down to up, which means that we're going to go zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that is really up to you. I'm going to show you both so that you get familiar with them. And then you got to tell it the limit. So when we are incrementing the for loop, how far do we want to go? So in this case, I'm only gonna go, let's say that I'll go up to 10, which is the, which in this case is actually 11 because it's a zero index. Because the numbers you're gonna get out, you're gonna get zero all the way through 10. So, and then you need to tell it what the incrementer is. So I'm gonna do I++ because that means that I'm gonna be incrementing that number by one every time I go through the sequence. So I'll do a couple of things in here so that you can see what is getting generated. Oh, and I'm not doing a console, I'm doing a debug.log. And what I'm actually gonna print out is the, the letter I. So, so what's gonna happen is I'm first gonna declare a variable of type integer. And that variable can be called, you know, this is just a variable, so you can call it whatever you whatever you prefer. I call it I, that's, this is a semantic that a lot of programmers use for for loops. And I wanna actually start at zero, so that's what I'm basically telling it, telling it my limit. So this is my starting point, this is gonna be my end, so I'm gonna go up to 10, because I'm, I'm incrementing as long as the evaluation of this condition is less than or equal to 10. So what's the incrementer gonna do, which is I++, which is gonna say, Okay, so when I go through this loop, I'm gonna say, okay, this one is equal to zero. The number that I'm on right now is zero, so it's less than 10. 
So the next time through the loop, I want to I want to increment that to a one. So it's going to go here. It's going to print zero. Now when we go back through, it's going to say, well, the next iteration I actually incremented to a one. So now this value is going to be set to a one. One is less than or equal to zero. Sorry, to ten. So that's still true. So I'm going to increment it. It's going to print one, and it's going to increment it to two in the next iteration, and then so on. So if we go back into Unity and we go into our console and actually hit play on the game, you're gonna see what is actually getting generated. So I, I told it that I wanted to start at zero and that my max number was gonna be was actually gonna be 10. So that's what that's why you're seeing the number 10 in there. So the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go into get mobj1, disable the script one, and then video two, disable it as well. Because I only want to see things that are happening in video three, so you don't really get confused by all the other console entries. So we can see we started at zero, we're incrementing one by one, adding a number to it every time, and then we're going up to 10. So what if you wanted to do that in reverse? So what changes can we make to this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do a for loop in reverse meaning that we're actually going to change the, the low bound and the high bound. So I'm going to go and say 4, and I'm actually going to start at 10 this time around. And, but I'm actually, I actually want to check to make sure that the value that I'm getting is, is greater than or equal to 0. And I'm actually going to go down, because I'm starting from 10, so I'm going to be decrementing that by 1, which is this decrementer is actually going down. And then I'm not going to go beyond 0, meaning that I'm not going to go to negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. I want my minimum to be 0 and my maximum to be 10. So now if we go back in here, and I'm actually gonna, just going to steal the line from above. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm actually going to add here. Uh, I'm going to say, OK, this one is the first loop, so that we know what we're iterating through. And then we can actually just do quotes and then plus, and then I'll do the same thing with the one below, except I'm going to call it second loop. And let's actually give this name. So first for loop, second for loop, because we're going to be adding some more below. So now if we go up to the game and actually hit play, you're going to see what happens. So now in the first loop we were in from you know from zero and we're incrementing so we're going in ascending order but in our in our next loop we're actually going in reverse which meaning we're going in descending order so we can we can actually loop through you know from a low number to a high number from a high number to a lower number so this is for loops are really used quite a bit so the other loop that I that I loop that I use a lot and you're gonna use a lot in games is actually the while loop. So in a while loop you can do you can do many things. You can do normally the syntax is gonna be so you do your while and then anything that goes in here is actually a logical expression. It's an expression that is gonna evaluate to true or it could evaluate to false. So for now I'm just gonna say true on this one. So I'm always going to be looping. This is going to be a loop that is going to be executing constantly. So, but I really don't want it to execute constantly because that it can be, you know, you're going to you're going to leave that in your code. It's going to keep executing. You're going to end up with, you know, an incorrect or bad performant game because you have a, an endless loop. So, what I what I'll do here is instead of doing i this time, I'm actually going to create a variable called x. Let's actually do it Let's actually call it max so that you know what I'm referring to. And my max is actually going to be 10. So, and then the other thing that I want to do is I'm going to create another variable where I'm going to be I'm going to be using for incrementing. So, I'm going to actually going to call it incrementer. And we're just going to start at zero. So, what I want to do is I want to check to make sure that. I'm not. I mean, I'm incrementing the incrementer, so this is gonna, this is going to increment one by one. But when I reach ten, I want to say, you know, I'm going to be printing a message saying I hit the max. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say incrementer, and then plus plus, and then right after that, I'm just going to say, okay, 
if so I'm actually gonna do it right before because the way that this is gonna work this is gonna start at zero so I want to check right away if these actually hit the max if I do it right after it's actually gonna increment to one and I'm not gonna have the option to check you know if I'm at zero and I want to check for the max so I'm gonna say if incrementer is equal actually less than or equal to to max equal to or equal to max so then what I'm gonna do there I'm gonna say I hit the max so I'm gonna actually paste uh, the debug log entry that I had from right above it and I'm gonna say while well, loop and then we can put I hit the max so if I if I do this every time I'm actually what, what's gonna happen is gonna say okay this is a true while true meaning that it's gonna keep it's gonna keep going through this code iterating and iterating so what's gonna happen is gonna say okay this is true incrementer is zero and it doesn't equal 10 so I'm never gonna get to this it's gonna get to here as soon as I hit to 10 and then but it's gonna keep going it's gonna be keep incrementing so what I want to do is I'm there's a couple of ways you can break out of a loop you can say you know I can say break here and that's actually completely okay that's actually gonna break out of this loop there is a better way to break out of a loop than doing just a, a break right here so this is gonna work but I'm gonna show you a different way in the next loop so what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm gonna say first while loop just like we did right above it and I'm actually going to yeah that's fine we can it's actually going to the into unity clear the log and actually hit play and you can see that I actually hit the max here and I'm not seeing anything else and that means that I was able to break out of the loop so let's actually go back into Visual Studio but there's an easier way to do this so I'm gonna leave this as an example and you can you can actually compare it to the other one that I'm gonna that I'm gonna be adding and you can do something like this so I'm actually gonna rename these variables and I'm gonna sell the I'm gonna set this one to let's say limit and this can be progress just to use a different different naming so it doesn't collide with the ones right above it or we could simply just wipe out the ones from above it and then reuse them let's actually do that so we so that you know what we're what we're doing so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to grab the max and actually the max doesn't need to change because the max is gonna be 10 and it's gonna still be 10 the one that we need to change is the one right below it and, and what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna set it to 0 here or you can actually set it to 0 as soon as we hit the max so we clear that variable let's actually do that so we don't have to do anything special and we can do the same thing for the one below and I'm actually going to rename this one to say second while loop and we can also do the same thing on the comment second while loop and we can do that one with this one first while loop so if you notice we haven't really done any anything here that is different just yet so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna move this check this expression to the condition right here so what I'm gonna be doing is instead of saying okay well incrementer equal equal max because that's gonna be false in the beginning you can actually do as soon as we hit the max meaning that we're either greater than or equal to the max as soon as I as soon as I do that well that's actually gonna keep going so I'm actually gonna do less than or equal to so as long as we're yeah within the boundaries on the max so this is gonna start at zero it is gonna be less than or equal to the max so it's gonna keep looping but I, as soon as I hit it meaning that it's actually incrementer is gonna be equal to 10 so both values are gonna be true it's actually gonna get another loop I'm not gonna be able to check this condition just yet well it'll actually check it here but I don't I actually don't need a break because the loop by itself the condition that I have right here is the one that is gonna allow me to break out of that loop so let's actually go into and, and just for for sanity purposes let's actually add a debug log entry right after here so that we know that we actually are ending and we can say 
ending loops. And we're, oh, we're going to be able to see that as soon as we break out of this loop. So if we go back into Unity, and we actually don't need to clear the log because I have this set to clear on play. So sometimes I forget about that, and it just makes me feel better about clearing the log even though it already does it automatically. So, so if you hit play, and we can see, let's give it a second. And let's give it one more second here. And I have the feeling that I have actually encountered an infinite loop, meaning that I didn't end the condition correctly. So if I go back into the code, we can actually see, so the max is actually set to 10. The incrementer is set to, oh yeah, I see what's happening. So I'm actually setting it to zero. So this is, this is actually never going to end. So you don't want to reset the variable here to zero because we're never going to get out of that. So as soon as we hit the max, we're setting it to zero. So we're starting over. So we have what, what's called an endless loop. It's actually a good, good example that I'm, actually encounter here that I show you. So, and now I have basically a broken Unity. And I think at some point it's gonna actually, okay, let's actually do this. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kill it. And actually go into the editor, hit close. And let's actually go open up Unity one more time. And I'm going to open the Unity C Sharp Fundamentals. And like I was saying, this is a perfect example. I did not want to reset the incrementer to zero. Otherwise, we're gonna end up where we, you know, where we started. So let's go back into our sample scene. And I don't think I saved the changes that I have. We just basically quickly add the video number two and actually number three. And I'm going to the associate the video one assign this to video two and quickly assign this one to video three so that we're back on where we were. Uh, so I'm actually gonna save the scene so I don't lose the changes next time. And it's actually focused on our console. So if I go back and hit play, if everything works and I don't have an endless loop, I should see the incrementer for loops that I showed you before, the decrementer, and then my first while loop, second while loop with the maxes, and then I also, I mean, actually he play one more time. And on the preview, on the on a few few minutes ago, I actually disabled these two. I'm actually gonna do that one more time. And so that I don't see what's happening on video one and video two. Perfect. So let's go back here, like back to video three. He play. And okay, so we have our basically our four loops with different incrementer and then decrementing then i'm hitting the backs and then i can see that my second while loop is actually ending which is great and then i'm hitting my ending ending loop so looks like everything is working so those are two ways to do it you can do a while loop with the boolean expression and then you control the condition inside of the while loop with basically a logical expression and you can actually break it i i have seen it in different ways it just really depends on what you're trying to achieve so i'm not going to tell you this is better than doing this way i i seen it in times when this makes more sense than actually having a break because I, if i miss that break i could i could actually have a lot of problems just like i did when i was declaring actually resetting the incrementer in here if you have a break you want to make sure that you're controlling that logic pretty well if you have it inside of the while loop, it's you know it's a lot easier to determine what the condition what condition is to be raised in order for you to get out of the while loop. So the other the other type of loop that I that I use a lot is is basically what's called a for each. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm actually going to create an array of a numbers manually, and what I'm actually going to be doing and I'm going to say okay I'm going to have integer. I'm actually going to call it Let's actually do ages. So these are ages of people. And then instead of the instead of the array, what I'm gonna actually be doing is we're gonna be putting actually different numbers inside. So I'm gonna do something like in a sequence. 
I'll do just like what we did above with the 1 through 10. Actually starts at 0, but for, for this example, this this is fine. This this should work. So let's see why is this it? this is complaining. And this is complaining because this is not I actually this is not a list of integers. So if you want to do a list of integers, make sure that you declare the right type. Otherwise you would need to surround it with you know with quotes for all of them. And the same thing here with the with the integer. If you wanted to do a list of, let's say, an array of strings, just like I was, like I did by mistake, you can do, maybe this is people's names, and we can do new string in an array, and we can say we want John, we want Steve, we want Andres, we want Joe again, maybe Joe. So basically four different, Four different items in that in that list so there's many ways that you can you can look through this we can use you know we can use a while loop in fact to actually look through this we can use a for loop and actually let me let me actually do a for loop with the list so that you know how that works and right after that I'll do a for each so if you wanted to look through so let's do this for ages we'll do a for loop and then for strings we'll do a for each so let's say that we wanted to loop through ages and so what I will do is we have we already created a for loop so I'm basically copying and pasting that but in this case I really don't want to set the limits myself what I want to do is I want to start at zero and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the condition here and I'm gonna say as long as it's less than or equal to ages that length and then we're gonna be basically incrementing and I'm gonna display each one of the edges. So we don't wanna display one through 10, let's actually do something more. Okay, I have a five year old, I have a 20 year old, I have a 33 year old. Let's actually not do it in, in order so that we can see how those numbers are changing. I'm actually gonna do 12, 15, 16, 17, maybe an 80 year old, 90 year old, and then a 10 year old, That's that's perfect. So, so you notice that I'm using ages. I'm actually using the variable here and I'm using the length. So if I do that notation here, it's actually gonna display everything that is available for an array. I have all these built-in functions that C Sharp provides for me. In fact, it has a length, so I can determine the length of this array. So the next thing that I wanna do, I'm gonna actually just print H and we're gonna be displaying the H, but you don't wanna print i. If we display i, it's actually going to display the index of that, meaning that for each iteration, this is going to have the value, the index at position 0, 1, 2, 3, and then so on. So we can do that. The index is fine, but I also want to display the h. So I'm going to do, let's actually do two things. So I can say index, index is that, and the actual value, which is the h, is going to be the actual h, but because we're doing an array, an array is an index base, a zero, zero base array, the way that you access each value is by expressing, you basically the variable name, a bracket, and then the index. So the index in this case is gonna be i, because what's gonna happen, this is gonna get, this is gonna be the variable in what we're telling the system is that we want to know what the value of this variable is when i is 0. So if, if i is 0, I'm going to get 5. If i is 1, I'm going to get 20, and so on. So at the same time, what I'm going to do, let's actually run this so that you can see what it's doing. Actually, going to go back into, into Unity. I'm going to clear it, and I did it again. I shouldn't have clicked on that because it automatically clears it. And hit play. And I think we're going, no, I don't think we're going, we're actually going outside of the bounds of the array. That is a common mistake. Let's actually go back in here. And the reason for that is because we're going, we're going beyond, we're starting at zero and we're going at the ages that length, which is actually gonna make us go one index more than what we have. So we can do two things. We can subtract one or we can actually just do less than ages that length. So if we go back down, Hit play, and we can see that we're displaying basically all the different ages. So 
an index zero, I had a five, an index one, I had a 20, and so on. So that, that's working. So now, the next thing that I wanna do, let me actually add some, so for loop, for, for loop with ages array, so that you know what I'm, what I'm doing in this example. And I'm actually gonna combine this. And I said that at the beginning of, of most videos, but I'm gonna actually, this is gonna be available in GitHub and it's actually available now. I will check this thing as soon as we're, we're done with this session. So the other thing that I wanna do is I want to do a for each and, and the for each is, is a great way to iterate through lists. So I could have used a for each here to iterate through each one of these integers, but I'm gonna do it for with people names. So the, the syntax is gonna be for each and what I'm gonna do is you can either do, just like you do when you're in declaring a variable, you can use var, or you can use the type itself. So I'm gonna use the type, which is string, and I'm gonna say, you know, name. I'm gonna call it name in people names. So this is what's called an iterator, and an iterator is gonna allow you to iterate through a list in this fashion. So th what this means is I know I have a list and for each item in the list, I'm, I'm actually gonna get the name. So this is gonna, actually gonna go through this list and I'm gonna say, okay, what's the first item on the list? It's gonna be John. And then it's gonna go again through that loop and it's gonna say, okay, what's the next one? What's the next one? And then what's the next one? So one thing that we can do here, we can also do debug.log. But in this case, I didn't really need to do an array type index, basically using this syntax. I I simply only has to specify the variable with a name and then the list that I want to iterate through. So now if I go back through and go into Unity, hit play one more time. You can kind of see that John, Steve, Andres, and Joe are displaying, so that worked really well. So that's really everything that I needed, I needed to cover in this video. So just to reiterate, we went through four loops. I went through a for loop for you know showing something in ascending, showing numbers in descending order. I also show you how to use a while loop with basically a true value in the expression by default. Then we had a condition raise and then we broke out of that loop. And we did the same thing with another while loop except we had the expression, basically the boundaries within the condition in the while loop. And then I also show you how to loop through a list of items. In this case, it was ages and also people names. We use a for loop to basically loop through a list of, of items in an array. And with the, the word integers. And we also did basically a list of people names. And we use the for each to accomplish that. So that's really what I wanted to cover today. If you guys have any questions about loops or other ways to that you can accomplish looping through lists let me know and i'm willing to discuss it or i'm willing to extend this lesson if you think there's more questions that you have so don't forget to subscribe and share this video guys and thank you very much for your time